Hi guys, I'm back and this isn't a movie, this is um, going to just quickly talk about two Australian miniseries which have just aired in Australia and one is Picking a Hanging Rock um, and I just reviewed the Peter Weir original and the other is Mystery Road which is a noir uh, kind of a detective story set in the outback. So um, they're the two I'm going to do. I'm not going to spend that much time on Picnic Hang Rock because I really did not like it and I'd much rather talk about the positives of Mystery Road. But let's get into it. Picnic Hanging Rock. So this is a six-part mini-series. So if you think back to the movie, the movie really apart from the girls uh, disappearing, there isn't that much. So in a movie, Peter Weir made it very magical and lyrical. So in this one, if you think about it, six episodes, they've got to really do everyone's backstory and they've taken all the same elements out of the movie, which is, you know, uh, struggling against the outback, um, uh, colonialism, especially uh, the girls being trapped both uh, physically on this kind of weird uh, school, but also metaphorically in that they're coming of age, some of them are in love with other girls, some of them are just trying to work out who they are and they all feel buttoned down in some way. Um, so the direction is all over the shop, there's not one vision, although I think um, uh, obviously there was an establishing uh, frame for the show and it is uh, very grotesque. And what I mean by that is you'll have a beautiful shot, um, like especially the picnic shots are all very much like um, Peter Weir's, or they try to, and then you'll have these other shots in the uh, school especially, which are just really hurried and they're trying to do tricks and stuff, it just does not work at all, it's very jarring. The other thing is, it's a shame to say, it's a big ensemble and the performances are, for the most part, quite mixed and not that good. So you've got Natalie Dormer uh, as Mrs. Appleyard, Mrs. or, you know, whatever. It's because she's got this convoluted backstory. Um, it is a Mrs. Appleyard, but you know that she isn't. You know that pretty soon that she's kind of got a new identity. Now, I didn't think Natalie Dormer was that great in this role, but because Natalie Dormer is just such a charisma machine, um, she's got a little bit of skill. She's at least interesting just because the actress. Um, then you have uh, basically the girls and then the, the staff. So uh, there's so many I've got it written down here. So the girls are Lily Sullivan um, and then Samara Weaving and Madeline Madden and they play Miranda, Irma and Marion. So they're the three main girls who, uh, with Edith, go up to the rock and disappear. And I thought they were all on occasion pretty good, but also probably, most of these were probably, this was their big uh, break. And uh, probably they were asked to do maybe a little bit too much, but to be fair, even the most uh, experienced actors really struggled with this material. The only actress which I thought uh, really came out looking good was Lola Bessis and she plays uh, Madame de Poitier. She was the only person who really looked like she had kind of an idea of the character and I don't really blame them because I actually think they were probably directed to do some of the performance. The, the one that I really want to talk about is Yale Stone who's a very good actress and she plays Dora Lumley who this kind of weird kind of person who's been constrained by her faith and but it's also just a strange kind of person anyway and there's implied the Lumleys generally are a bit odd. And the way that they film her and the way they film her interactions, they're trying to make it really a bit creepy and that, but it just comes off as strange and just, you just don't want to even watch those scenes. So it's a real shame. Um, look, all in all, uh, it's a really, you know, bad, bad film. Uh, let, let's, Forget about. I'm going to come back and talk about something really, really good. Mystery Road. 
Okay, so uh, quite a few years ago now, Ivan Sen made a movie called Mystery Road, um, I think it was 2013, in which he introduced this great character, uh, Jay Swan, who's performed by Aaron Pedersen, and we'll talk about him in a second, in which you have an Aboriginal who's a detective and is dealing with crimes in the outback. And in terms of Australia's political landscape, that is a great, you know, tectonic plate um, because between he's both Aborigine and he's also carrying all the weight of the uh, police who have been known to do horrible things to the Indigenous population in Australia. So he walks this really fine line and that movie got a lot of praise and then he made another film about two years ago called Goldstone with the same character and Jay Swan's kind of like really on the down by then. Now Mystery Road, interestingly enough, the miniseries is in between those two films, which kind of makes sense because Goldstone is kind of, you're probably seeing the repercussions of the things which occur in Mystery Road. So it's a six part miniseries. Now the difference between this and Picking Hang Rock, one director, Rachel Perkins. Now Rachel Perkins um, also is uh, an Indigenous Australian and she's been working for a long time and man, she just brings it. This is the best Australian miniseries I've seen for a long time. I really loved Secret City, which was about a year ago. Um, totally different kind of milieu about politics in Canberra. But this is outstanding at every level, whether it's acting, the writing, the performances. But Rachel Perkins, to start with, she delivers the camera in a way which you don't often see in Australia. And I used to always wonder, why is it that when I watch an overseas miniseries, is it just the budget or is it the technology they're using? It isn't. It's Rachel Perkins' eye. She is able to raise every scene uh, artistically by using different techniques and really captures what it's like to be in the outback. Um, just absolutely fantastic. I can't praise it high enough. Um, so she's great. Then you bring in this great cast and led by, let's talk about Aaron Pedersen first as Jay Swan. So he is, he just walks in and he has star appeal. Like he is a movie star and really the charisma that he shows over these six episodes equal to the, like if you're watching Training Day and then when Denzel Washington comes out. He is absolutely fantastic and really uh, I could watch, if they brought out a show which was just Jay Swan every week, I would watch that. He, he is just outstanding and in some ways is too good, like he really blows everyone off the screen. Judy Davis plays like the offsider, so Judy Davis famous one of the most famous Australian actresses ever, and she plays um, Emma James, who's the white sergeant who runs uh, like the police force in this small town where two boys have gone missing. So that's, it's a bit of MacGuffin, it's like Chinatown, you start down one path and then it all unravels. So I don't even want to talk about that much because you just, just watch it and the story will uh, take you where uh, you should. But she's really good because she's so, <laughs> Judy Davis is so small, she's, she's getting on now and you know, you can see the lines in her face and I, I don't think I've ever seen her play a policewoman before and to begin with I was thinking, oh this is not going to work, she's a bit miscast but then as the uh, emotional arc of her character and of the whole miniseries takes place, you go, okay, they really needed someone who would be able to work these later scenes and make them uh, click. So she is great. Uh, the funny thing is the, her brother uh, in the, in the uh, miniseries who owns a big plantation kind of thing, a big outback station, is played by Colin Frills. And really, if you don't know these kind of things, uh, Colin Frills and Judy Davis have been a couple uh, living in the inner city of Sydney for a long time. They're well known, like they just walk around and 
they're like royalty uh, to us because they're just so down to earth. And uh, they play like the sparring uh, sister and brother. And you can see they've just got that chemistry from being together for so long. Uh, and Frills is always good anyway. Now, one of the things I wanted to say about this, which is just so great, is because really 70%, 80% of the cast is Indigenous Australian, um, they're all able to just play characters. And what I mean by that is often in Australian TV, but you see it overseas as well, if you have a character who is of a very specific uh, ethnicity or they're gay or something, they often have to carry a lot of baggage because they're going to be the identity of that tribe, for want of a better word. But all of a sudden, if you have like eight different uh, Aboriginal actors and actresses, then all of a sudden they can just be people. And you can have bad people, you can have good people, you can have very complex people, people who make mistakes. And this is what you get here. And it's really, really, really good. Um, I thought that uh, Ernie Dingo is, but I haven't seen him for years. He isn't in a big role, but really, again, when he's on the screen, you go, okay, this is a guy who's, you know, knows what he's doing now. Um, the other cut, I'm gonna have to read because I don't know them all. Like, I'll mention um, the Swan family is Madeline Madden, who I just talked about. She's in Picnic at Hanging Rock, which is, she's got an interesting character in Picnic. Um, she plays, uh, Jay Swan's daughter Crystal and Tasmo uh, Walton plays uh, Mary Swan. So they're very good in the sense that they give a very uh, different kind of role. Like they've obviously been in a bigger city when they come to this small town. They carry just a little bit of sophistication compared to some of the locals. Um, then you have Wayne Blair. He plays Larry Dime and I think he does a really good performance because he plays a very hard role of a man who's been convicted of pedophilia and um, you can imagine all the uh, convolutions of that kind of performance. Then you have um, Tazla Zalar. I'd never heard of her before. She plays Siobhan Shield. She's one of the real leads and I thought she was absolutely fantastic. Her and Madeline um, Madden as the two young Aboriginal girls really, you know, future is very bright for them. They're beautiful looking, but really good looking, um, not good looking, uh, good performances and across a whole range of emotions. Um, that's probably it for the cast. I mean, there's, there's lots of really good people. You could see it was filmed on location. So it's filmed in the Kimberleys, which is in West Australia. It's, you know, really isolated part of our country. Um, the star really is the landscape. I mean, it is beautifully shot. And the DOP, I'll just check, Mark Wareham. So you've got Mark Wareham really just bringing it with the lighting and the camera. Rachel Perkins with that great eye, cast, good story. You know, I mean, the other thing that I'll just finish up with is this was made by the ABC in Australia. And in Australia, there's a big debate where the right wing are kind of saying we don't need the ABC, they could private, and they've um, kind of like in America and everywhere else, the right keeps attacking them. We're really the left, um, really most Aussies just like the ABC because it's kind of seen as neutral. No other channel could have really done this story. If you said, okay, we need six part mini series, nearly everyone's Aborigine, um, but it's gonna be a really good detective story because you need that. But we're also gonna be talking about the past and how these power structures, and no one else is doing that. No one's giving Rachel Perkins the money she need to do this properly. And it's just a beautiful compliment to the ABC and to the ABC Indigenous uh, branch for bringing this alive. Um, really bouquets for everyone. If people, uh, really this is what you, if you wanted to tell people about the art of storytelling in Australia in 2018, you show them this, Mystery Road. Fantastic. It's on ABC iView, and I'm sure it'll eventually end up on all the streaming channels around the world. Please watch it, it's great. Okay, that's it for today. I'll be back with more movies later in the week. Um, the usual thing, if you like what I'm doing, press like, subscribe, hit the bell, then you always know what I'm doing. 
and I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.